Thank you for the offering. We appreciate it, ever how much it was or is. We appreciate it so much. And uh, if some of you is going home tonight or, or tomorrow before Brother Barnett gets a chance to tell you, he thanks you too. I know he does. See, the way it was, they received the offering today, and he maybe didn't get a chance, but I know he does. And uh, we both appreciate it so much. And uh, <clears throat> I'd like to say that that I appreciate Brother Virgil Gay and Brother Bill and them driving up to be with us from down in Georgia. And I see Brother Leroy and Brother Otis and them, some of the Savannah folks come in. Brother Leroy and especially Brother Otis. Uh, I remember Brother Otis used to live in that little shotgun style house over there. And I was in that old school bus. I told them a little bit about it the other night, Brother Otis. And we were so glad to see them come in and people from different places. Uh, uh, Sister Renee and them from down at Adale's come and Wherever you are from, we're glad you're here. And uh, we, we just appreciate our friends. And uh, I said over at Shady the other, other night, the first night of the camp meeting, I preached on, uh, there is a friend, uh, take my money, take what little possessions I have, but please leave me with my friends. Right, Amen. I, I, I cherish my friends above everything else right. except my salvation. I'd rather have them than have the clothes that I wear, the shoes that I wear, the car that I drive. I'd rather have my friends, thank God. They mean so much, and every time we can get together and see them, it means so much. This is one thing I think that's going to make heaven so great, so valuable. Sometimes uh, pastor now <clears throat> evangelized for years, and pastor now... Sometimes I, I just get the longing to see certain folks across the country. I get to thinking about them and I get to missing them. And, and uh, I hadn't been in the New Branch area over in Georgia in, uh, in uh, several years. I don't know, maybe six years, seven years. And I got to wanting to go so much. And uh, Brother Virgil and them called me and to come preach them a revival, but I couldn't. But I'll tell you what, I drove all the way from Mobile, Alabama, all the way across to the uh, uh, way over on the other side of Georgia, close to Savannah, just to preach for one night. Right. And uh, really, I knew my preacher wasn't going to be that great, but I just wanted to see everybody in that area. Drove over there, preached, and come back. Uh, spent the night, got off to bed, I guess, 2 o'clock. And uh, <clears throat> at my mom's, come back by my mom's, and, uh, and I was called around 4 or something like that. And uh, we got up and got ready and drove to Orlando, Florida. And then back home for, for uh, our church. But my friends means much to me. Praise God. And, uh, and uh, we're just glad to meet new people and get new acquaintance and new friends. <clears throat> Book of Ecclesiastes. Third chapter of the Book of Ecclesiastes. Third chapter, the first verse of the Book of Ecclesiastes. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence. And a time to speak. I wish I could learn that one right there. Just that one would help me a lot. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. <clears throat> of course, you've already guessed it tonight. And know what my text and thought is. In Ecclesiastes 8 and 6, because to every purpose there is a time. And judgment. I want you to listen to this. 
Because to every purpose there is a time and judgment. Therefore the misery of man is great upon him, for he knoweth not that which shall be. For who can tell him when it shall be? The ninth chapter, the twelfth verse. For man also knoweth not his time, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare. So are the sons of man snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them. Right, yeah. Tenth chapter, fourteenth verse. A fool also is full of words. A man cannot tell what shall be, and what shall be after him, who can tell him? Eleventh chapter, fifth verse. As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. Praise the Lord. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the sun. I've got here a regular old alarm clock. My wife bought it last week. She didn't know she was buying it for the camp meeting. She didn't realize that she was buying it for this night. My brother over there, I've already talked to him about it. I want you to listen close, if you will. You hear the tickings of this clock? You know what it's saying every time? It ticks time, 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 time. I'll get it just in a minute, brother. I hope this will work. Do you know what it's saying? It's saying time is ticking. And it's passing by. And it's going. And it's going. And it's going. You know what it's doing? It's taking away. Mind your life. Every time that clock picks, it's saying closer and closer to death and eternity. Before this clock gets through ticking here in a little while, there's going to be many across this world that's gone into eternity. In fact, they tell us that every minute, 128 souls is ushered into eternity. Yes, it's still ticking. But for some that was here last year, they don't hear that. They'll never hear that again. They're gone. You see, when the Lord, when I left them here last year, the Lord spoke to me one day concerning the camp meeting. Even before Brother Horton, before Brother Ralph called. And Brother Grant spoke to Brother Ralph about uh, me coming back. The Lord had already spoke to me and said, When you go back to Richlands this year, I want you to preach. And I want you to tell them that there will be nobody laying in front of the doors this year. 
There'll be nobody laying there crying and begging and nobody laying at the doors and standing to keep them to go. That if they want to go, the doors will be open with no roadblocks. They can go. I'm turning them loose to let them go. They've heard me time and time again. I spoke to their hearts. I spoke to their lives. I spoke to them in the stillness of the night. And they wouldn't listen. And now I'm going to remove all the roadblocks and let them go. If that's what they want to do. Time marches on. You and me might switch this clock off. This clock might stop ticking. But it still marches on. Amen. Amen. Oh yes, we might try to unplug the clock on the wall. But time marches on. You might put color back in your hair, ma'am or sir. But time marches on for you. You might get a facelift, but time marches on your life right on. Oh, you might take all the exercises and, and all the vitamins and herbs that you can get, but you still get older as the clock ticks, and time marches on for you. I look around, and I see people that I knew some years ago. How their hair was not white. Their face was not recalled. Many times when I go to shave... I look into the mirror and I see the wrinkles coming. I see the gray hairs beginning to shine in my head. And it reminds me, Neil, oh boy, you're older than you used to be in time. It's getting away. It's ticking. It's saying you're closer. You are nearer. And the Bible said and Paul said to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians in the 6th chapter in the 2nd verse. He said now is it set to time. Yes. Amen. Amen. Today. Right and Solomon I believe in course. Uh, we talk about, and Solomon was dealing with vanity of vanities, but I want to tell you, he was dealing with time also. And he said, who can tell a man when it shall be? Who can tell uh, when he'll die, he said. Who can tell that down the road somewhere tonight, Death stands by the roadside waiting for somebody in this tabernacle tonight to take them out into eternity and time has ceased for them. Right. In eternity there's no clocks ticking. Do I hear it? Is it in eternity no calendars rolling? There is no Mondays and Sundays. There is no seconds and thirds. In eternity it is without an end. They sing that song. I live on through eternity. I live on. I told them down home, let's change that and sing that we'll live on in eternity because it is without an end. There the clocks of time do not tick. Whether it be an old clock like this ticking or whether it be a sand clock or whatever type of measurement of time of a duration from one point to another. There it is without an end. Hallelujah. If you could see the rich man in hell, he would say, time means nothing. I am here forever. Lost, doomed, and down. How the clock ticks on your life. Time marches on you. Somewhere after a while, the alarm will go off and say to you, it is over. Oh God. Oh God. The seriousness of the hour. I'm persuaded to believe without a shadow of a doubt. It's time America has a revival. If we don't have it now, we'll never have one. Good. All right, fine. We'll never have one. If we don't have a revival now, 
we will never have one. I believe with all of my heart it's time for us to have a revival in America. I believe God has given us one more opportunity uh, that we have a revival before judgment falls on America. Hallelujah. Uh, you've never seen so much bickering and backbiting and skimmish among the church world as there is today. I think it's time that we take our, our weapons off of each other and aim them at sin and at the devil and at the world. Amen. And get together and unite together and say, God, we want a revival one more time in America. An old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival again. It's time that we, the children of God, stand up and be counted uh, with the people of God and on God's side. You see, because time is running out. Some are saying later, but it is later now than we've ever thought. It's later than we think it is. The day is far spent. The night's at hand. I believe with all of my heart that we are near end of this dispensation of grace and opportunity to do whatever that we can for the Lord. And while time peaks and it goes on, there are some that sit so idly by unconcerned there are those that are saying a later day there are some saying a tomorrow but I believe it's now or never the importance of this very hour should alarm us to the situation that we're in that we must have revival now of forever sake let me tell you I've been doing some research and studying and uh, this child pornography business uh, that the federal government is promoting and pushing out to try to stop abuse of children. And I'm against a, 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 a child abuse as much as anybody. But I want to tell you something. That is not for our good. All right. All right. All right. Amen. Uh, oh, Brother Bridges, you mean to tell me to stop abusing little children? It's not good. Yes, it's good to stop abusing children. But it's not going to stop there. What if you spank your child for cutting a tantrum and they take him away from you? Would you call that good? Now they're trying to pass laws to say that a child has his right, his constitutional right, to go wherever he wants to go to church. Last year, excuse me, in 83, uh, there was over 2,000 ministers sued for vile practice in America. And they collected, that's the ones that was collected on for vile practice. Uh, brother, I'm telling you, time is nearer run out for us than we think for. But Brother Bridges, I'm waiting for a more convenient season. I believe the season is right now for whatever we want to do for God. And if you plan to be saved, it is now that you must arise while the clock is ticking. While time is still in your favor. While God is sparing with a little mercy. While opportunity is yours. While God's Holy Ghost is missed in camp meeting after camp meeting. Revival after revival. Amen. Tried in these last times to get people in and get them saved and get them ready. Hallelujah. Brother, time is running out. For some that arose this morning, they never saw the sunset. Come on, brother. For some that rushed on the job to see the clock did not get to see it when the others walked out. Time run out on them. They are no longer one of the most booming businesses there is. It's a funeral business. Down in our, in our town, Mobile, one of the funeral homes there has, uh, has a funeral home that uh, I don't know, it must have 10 or 15 uh, rooms to have wakes in and for the families together. And that's just one of the few funeral homes 
And there's been times they've had to hold the deceased over till the next day because they had no room. Uh, to put the uh, put their remains and put the corpse and for the family to gather together and welcome the friends and, and the friends to pay their sympathy they've had to wait till the next day time is running out on so many oh uh, it's catching most unaware and more than unaware unprepared to meet the Lord their God they've lived for self they've lived for their self motives and they've lived for sin and time Time has run out on them. Who can tell him when it shall be? Oh, if only we do tonight among us who it would be uh, that would never have another opportunity, would never be in another camp meeting, would never have another altar service, would never get another chance. You know what we do? We'd lay down this mic. And I and Brother Horton and Brother Ralph and others would go to them and say, Look, man, look, woman, times are running out on you. And you're soon going to be ushered into eternity. But you see among this congregation, who can tell? Who can tell it when it shall be? Oh, brother, as fish that are caught in the evil head. So the sons of men snared. Oh, they're caught when they least expected it. I didn't expect death this early. I didn't expect to die this young. Oh, I didn't expect to have to lead it. You see, I was in good health. And I had plenty of income. And I had everything to live for. And I wasn't expecting time to run out. I wasn't expecting the clock of time for my life to start ticking. And all of a sudden the alarm goes off. And you're called to eternity. Huh. It's ticking. It's ticking. You hear it? It's saying you've got time tonight to be saved. You've got time tonight to find the Lord. You've got time tonight to make your calling and election sure. Ah, hallelujah. Do you hear the tick? Do you also hear the call? As you hear the tick, you hear the call. Come, come. Times are running out. Times are running out. Oh, I, I young men think that religion's for old men. And old men thinks religion and salvation is for the young. And they're both deceived. It's for all. Hallelujah. If you're old enough to realize the time. You're old enough to realize you need to be saved. If you're old enough to realize how that the clock of time is ticking on you. Then you're old enough to realize that you need to settle the old account. And make it right with the Lord Jesus Christ. Who can tell? Who can tell? At uh, this time next year, oh, if I had only known so and so was there that night, if I only knew, I'd have went to them and I pled with them. If I only known, I uh, so and so I uh, ushered into eternity. Saying if I only knew uh, that it was like that, I would have made it right. I'd have made it. Uh, I might call an election sure. If I only knew that. Time was so close to running out on me. If I only knew that I was facing the midnight hour, that I'd soon be in eternity, that I'd soon cross a line of worlds. You see, I was young. I was healthy. I was doing good. And all of a sudden, time ran out. A young 16-year-old man in Elizabethtown, Kentucky, this and his girlfriend, leaned up against the post and as he leaned against the post <coughs> the post kicked out and it was a <coughs> wood style house and the corner of the porch kind of dropped and he threw his hands up to catch it and dropped dead with a heart attack a star basketball player 
in our country that was also on the track team. His health was an A, number one. He lifted weights. He ran for miles. Went out on the basketball uh, court in the second ending as they dribbled out on the court and somebody throwed the ball to him and he caught it and run for a layup. And as he started up, his legs crumbled and his arms fell back and he fell on the floor. They run to him and screamed and said, is there a doctor in the house? And a doctor come out of the bleachers and run to him and pull out his stethoscope and stuck it on him and listen and pronounced him dead. In the midst of the second ending, on his way for a layup with a basketball, as he started up, the clock stopped, brother. That that you hear now, he heard no more. He was ushered into eternity. His ball did not make it to its goal. He did not get the applause of the crowd. He did not get to finish that game. Ah, I bet he was stopped in the middle of it all. What are you saying? I'm saying to you, my precious friend, in the middle of all of your business, in the middle of your games of life, in the times of luxury, in the times that you leastly expected, like a fish that's snared in an evil there. So could you be snared in an evil time when you least expect it. I'll tell you there'll be multitudes in hell that died so uncertain and so unexpected. How they'll be screaming and crying if I knew if I had one more meeting to go to. If I had one more service I could attend. If I had one more chance, Lord, give me a little more time. Give me a little more opportunity. Oh, Lord, help me. Let me have one more chance to pray. But time is out. It caught them. It caught them unaware. It caught them when they least expected. You see that little clock sitting there? If it does what I want it to do, I got it set for a certain time that the alarm is going to go off. You don't know when that is. Job said he numbers my steps and he sets a bound that I cannot go over. God's got your number. God's got your time. Hallelujah. As we look in the gardens, uh, uh, people planting gardens, uh, there's what they call uh, the morning flower. Amen. And it only the morning glory. And it only blooms in the morning. And it comes up with the sun. And if you will see it, it's a beautiful flower. But it only blooms just in the morning. And just for a little while. And its bloom is gone. Before the noon sun comes down all the way. That sun, that flower's already folded. And it's gone and it is not. Then there's other row of flowers that stay through the day. There's some like the zales that stay a few weeks. There's some uh, that stays the summer through. Ah, yes. They none bloom the same time. So is it with your life and mine. Brother, you might think you one that'll be here for a while. Ah, but before you know it, the clock of time goes off and the judgments of God call you and you have to answer to Him. Job said He'll call and I'll answer. He'll have a desire the work of His own hand. Brother, when the clock goes off, it's time to go somewhere and to do something or other. Hallelujah. While it is ticking at night, it's time to consider your eternal welfare, your soul, and your destiny. While the clock of time is ticking in your favor and count down the hour or the very second that God will call you. You see, as I set that clock, you don't know what I set it for. I didn't let anyone see. My wife doesn't even know 